everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I have escaped from work for a brief moment <laughs> to be able to record a video for today. That's right, Lucifer, my cat is going crazy because he knows that I'm finally free. That's right. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Lost Belt 5 Olympus campaign, which got announced a little while ago. I think it was either two days ago, maybe by this point. Um, but we've known about it since the previous campaign. We always knew it was coming September 30th. I just wanted to wait a little bit to see if they added a new unit to the banner, and they totally did. So we're going to be going over it. Let's go over it. So, uh, Road to 7, Lost Belt 5 Olympus campaign. Uh, starts uh, September 30th and goes until October 7th, and this is when I would assume the Halloween event starts with the new Liz. That's my assumption, anyway. Um, the limited interlude quest that will be open, so certain servant interlude quests will be available to clear even if you don't op own the servant in question. Additionally, the following interlude quest will cost one half the usual amount of AP. One moment, because now I have to let the cat out. Apparently he wasn't at the door. I'm just losing my mind. Halloween started early. I'm being haunted. Anyway, <laughs> the, the limited interlude quest. The dudes who will have their interludes open will be uh, Dyscuri, Romulus Queerness, um, Sherlock Holmes, Canis, and uh, uh, Caligula. I don't know why I was going to call him Nero. He loves Nero. That's not his name. They're going to have their interludes open. Um, the limited time of campaign will feature everyone that was in this one. So it'll be Dyscuri. It'll be Musashi, Saber Musashi, Romulus Squareness, Kariness, Europa, uh, Sherlock Holmes, and Caligula. And then along with one half AP rank up quest for the following servants, which will be these three. And then one half, uh, one half AP campaign, one half AP for all Olympus free quests. The one half AP for all free quests will be applied the following three times when the free quest is cleared. From the fourth time onward, AP costs will be normal. And if you already cleared them all, you don't get to take advantage of it. And then one fourth AP campaign for main quest one, which is Fuyuki to Solomon, and then Anastasia to Olympus, which is arc two. I don't think there's any bonus to the Epic of Remnants. And that's the campaign, and uh, get going. Like I said, the start, the next uh, Halloween event will require you to have finished Lost Belt 5 Olympus, uh, which is going to be the Liz Halloween, which I think I can show right here real quick. This should be in the upcoming expand yeah here it is you have to have cleared olympus so <laughs> get, get on that next game update so we'll be coming with it the one who show the one who shoulders the mother goddess which is a returning command code which will give critical damage plus five percent on the engraved card and then recover 100 hp when attacking using the engraved card here's the item exchange cost two simple enough some limited, limited time master missions as always clear olympus prologue and then clear any of the Olympus free quests one, two, or three times, and you'll get five teapots, one golden foe for HP, and the other one for attack. And the recollection quests are the same as always. After you clear Olympus, you'll get these unlocked for recollection, and then the super recollection. So clear Olympus, you'll unlock this first one, beat it, and you'll unlock the harder version, and then you'll get the next recollection quest. Beat that recollection quest, get the harder version, plus the last recollection quest. Beat this last recollection quest, get the harder version. And just beating the old fights again will give you a summon ticket, so that'll be up to three. And you don't have to do the super recollection quest, but if you do, that'll be 30 T-Gazer Star Pots. So if you're looking for the challenge, it's definitely there for you. And that is basically it for it. Um, I won't show the fights because maybe you're still going through it. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Very, very self-explanatory. They just want you to hurry up and get to Olympus already. And you should experience Olympus. I like Olympus good enough. I don't think it's one of my favorite ones. But I remember having a good time uh, playing it and stuff like that. Uh, reading the story. I just don't think it uh, hit me as hard as Atlantis did. Probably because I heard a lot of people talk about it over the years. Maybe that's a little bit of a thing of it. But you know. Eh. Anyway. Summoning campaign. <laughs> Here's going to be the banner. It will start on September... Not September 23rd. It will start on September 30th. Excuse me, Japanese version of this. Um, and it will feature five units. Uh, three units on here. My bad. Um, Dyscuri, Tesla, Romulus Quirinus, and Europa. Uh, along with every single... I think every single banner? Not every single banner. One banner features... Some banners featuring Canis and the other one featuring Helena. The way it breaks down is that it looks like this. With... Um, First is going to be Europa and Canis, and then Tesla and Helena, and then 
Romulus Squareness and Canis, and then finally Daskiri and Canis here. And along with there are going to be a Raid of Craft Essence as well, which is going to be the one you get for clearing Olympus, which is together tomorrow, which is very nice. Art, that is, and the effect of it is like, I think, okay. It's, uh, it is free when you beat it, so I'm not going to be complaining about it. It's more to remember the actual journey. So, I will, as I usually do, very quickly go over the fours and then actually go over the five. There actually are some good fives here, but if you just want a quick breakdown here, there's almost no reason to be summoning on this banner if you're someone who's not looking to get more copies of someone or looking to get the first copy of a card you really like. If you're just someone who's like, hmm, should I summon on these? The answer is always no. But if you're curious about them, I'll give you a little bit more detail on them, but that's that's the way I'm seeing it. If you're someone who's just like new to the game and you're looking and goes like, is there anyone here? There are some good units here, but they're not on that level where you have to drop everything. If you're, it's better to save for some of the bigger haters coming near the end of the year. But yeah, the four stars, just to go over them real quick. Helena is always in every banner. She's not um, limited in any capacity. She has three arts, one quick, one buster. Her skills are very much set to be like Ray's MP gain, 20%. The Mahatna gains some crit stars, but it's very much like a um, support unit, charges her own MP gauge. And her third skill also gives buster performance. The thing that's nice about her is that she gives herself 50% MP just outright, and she has an AoE uh, Noble Phantasm. So in some team builds, you can use her to take out the first wave of enemies and then start going into some of your other dudes on here. So this increases the party's quick arts and buster performance. So that's something to kind of look for. I think she's a very neat support servant and definitely if you're a newer person, you can make a lot of use out of her. I wish my Helena was actually MP5. I think mine's only one, which is a shame. Um, it would be nice to get her MP5. And then Canis is story locked. So if you're a big fan of Canis, this is your chance to get them. Uh, because they're story locked, which story locked is like limited but worse because it's like limited with even more restrictions on them. Uh, they're always in story banners, but they're basically like limiteds and they don't come back all that often. Um, and in terms of a unit, I remember them being just kind of okay. Monster Strength B giving 40% attack for two turns is like eh on a cooldown of five. This buff does help them, I think, a little bit, because it charges MP gauge by 20%, but I also remember them being like a single target unit. Reduce zone damage taken for three attacks, three turns, and give yourself a gut status. Oh no, sh sh AoE, that is unfortunate. So yeah, that, uh, <laughs> um, that charges on MP gauge by 20% is very unfortunate, because it means you can't do modern... The bread and butter version of a buster loop, which is two Koyan Skyas and an Oberon. The reason is is that usually you need a cooldown of uh, six or lower. Uh, it's seven, I think, or lower on the JP version of the game, but that's because they use, they have this fifth of pen skill, but on NA, it's a different story. I have to bring that up, otherwise someone on JP will correct me. But just know, I'm talking about specifically on NA. <laughs> But charging your own MP gauge by 20% is kind of rough because you need it to be 30 because that will give you 30% plus all of Oberon will give you 100% MP for the final turn. So that means that probably she's not actually good at doing that. And she, because her AoE also gives her 50% crit damage, maybe you'd want to try and do some crit stuff with her. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. But at the same time, I know people like Canis, so maybe... <laughs> That's good enough, but I think they could probably use a little bit more buffs on the first and third skill to be 100% real. If you have used them a little bit more, feel free to tell me about how you feel about them. But I'm definitely looking at that kit feeling like, I think they should be... It's fine that they don't want to uh, make them a loop unit, that's perfectly fine. But I feel like if they want them to be more crit focused, they need a little bit more to help them out. But, you know, feel free to tell me how you feel about them. That's how I feel. Next, let's actually go into the the five stars and we'll start in order of which they were really going to be released which will be uh europa tesla romulus queerness and then finally Daiskiri. so we'll start with europa which this one should be very easy to talk about <laughs> europa she's a writer her europa or she's actually known europe she has one quick two arts two buster three hits on quick three hits on arts the one hit on Buster, five hits on Extra. Her active skills are Princess of Purity B, Grand Self Invincibility for three attacks, increases on debuff resistance for three uh, for three times, and then that debuff resistance is 100% on the cooldown of six. Her second skill is Affection of the Chief God A+, an increase to Arts and Buster uh, performance for three turns, and then charge her MP gauge by 30% on the cooldown of six. 
Her third skill is the White Bull of the Chief God C. 6% chance to charm all enemies for one turn, reduces their defense for three turns, chooses their critical attack chance for three turns, 20% on defense and 20% on crit damage on a cooldown of seven. Passive skills are Magic Resistance C, Writing A+, and Divinity C. Her third skill is an Anti-Ruler Attack Damage Aptitude, and her Noble Phantasm is the Sifri Tau Talos, the Bronze Giant's Ultram Heavy Mallet. Rank A, Anti-Army, hits four times, increases own defense by 50% for a single turn, then deals damage to all enemies. The damage is 300% at level 1, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 500%. And then she increases her Buster Performance for a single turn, 20% at hard charge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, that's 40%. And that's Europe. Um... This ability is very good. Uh, the, the fact that the debuff resistance is the only thing on it is kind of a bummer, but the fact that this is just a straight up three attacks at invincibility and there's no cooldown on it and it's a cooldown is six, that's not bad. That's not bad. Unless you're going against someone who is specifically anti-invincibility, that's not too bad. Um, I feel like they need more. This is a very basic unit. Very basic. They're also not limited, so there's literally no reason to summon for this unit. Yeah, I'm even trying to see, like, would they be useful in, like, a weird challenge? But they can loop! Because the second skill is 30%, and as I was explaining with Ky uh, Kindness, that means that... And this is on a cooldown of 6, so that means you can... Uh, with a 50% starting NP, 30% on this, and then mana loading. That gives you 100%, you shoot your Noble Phantasm, you use all your skills. You, probably not the last one, because this is unfortunately on cooldown 7, so you probably wait to use this for the last turn. Um, do it to the second turn, go third, and then you got a loop there, but uh, I don't know. Her entire kit seems kind of weird. It feels like you want to use her in challenge quests, but at the same time, what kind of challenge quests are you using her for? Some very specific ones. It means, <laughs> it feels like, at this point, if you're going to be using her for a looper, you may as well use a better one. Um... I think she's not the worst on NA at the moment, just because Iskandar exists in the way he is, but he's definitely stronger than her. Um, even in his weakened form, he's just waiting for his buff to happen eventually. Yeah, I don't know. This one's weird. If you actually use <laughs> Europa or Europe, feel free to tell me how you use her. Because right now I'm looking at it, she seems just kind of very basic. Nothing really, like, outstanding other than this first skill. The rest is like, yeah, yeah, 30% of Arts Buster MP, sure, that's, that's perfectly fine. A 60% charm, chance to charm everyone is like, eh, that's fine. This would be better on a unit that probably has, high, who does a little bit more with charm, but she doesn't really do anything with that. Reducing their defense and critical attack chance would be good if you're using it as a defensive unit. But I don't know, it still feels like a really weird choice. Especially because, again, this overcharge effect is like an increase to Buster damage, but 20%? I don't know. Feels like she could use some buffs, but she does look very nice. I've always liked the look of her. I wish they did more with her. <laughs> like, the look at that, that's adorable. Anyway, that's enough on Europe. Next is going to be Tesla, which I have to be very careful with what I say about Tesla. Uh, Tesla is story locks. I start, I'll start with this because I forgot, which means again, he's limited with extra steps, which can mean he can sometimes be a pain in the ass to get. He's an archer. He has one quick, two arts, two buster, with three hits on quick, two hits on arts, one hit on buster, and three hits on extra. His first skill, which is after the strengthening two, do we have this right now? I'm going to assume no. We do. We did get this most recently. The Tesla Coil A++ increases own MP generation rate for three turns, increases the beat debuff uh, success rate for one turn, increases party's MP generation rate except for self for three turns, and then increases buff uh, party's buffer success rate for three turns. The MP rate up is 50%, the debuff success rate is 40%, the MP rate up except self is 30%, the buff success rate is um, 20% and that's a cooldown of 5. The second skill is the Natural Born Genius EX, 80% chance to increase own defense and 80% chance to increase own MP gauge for 3 turns, and then increase own attack for 3 turns and give himself some guts. The defense up is 30%, the MP damage is also 30%, and the attack up is 20%. The, rev the revive revives him with 3000 HP. And the cooldown is 5, and I should mention the Guts was one time over 3 turns. Um, third skill is the Pioneer of the Stars EX, which charges his MP gauge, ignores invincibility for 3 turns, and then gains some crit 10 crit stars, which is 50% to MP on a cooldown of 6. He has Magic Resistance and Independent Action B as his two passive skills. His third skill is an Anti-Caster Damage Aptitude, because uh, never trust Thomas Edison. 
And his noble phantasm is Ranky X after an interlude, the system Kiernos, the legend of mankind advent of lightning, Ranky X, anti-fortress, hits three times, it's buster, deals damage to all enemies, 40% chance to stun them for one turn, 500% chance to deal 500 damage to self, the MP damage at level 1 is 400%, and then if you get them all the way to 600%, uh, 600%, if you get them all the way to MP level 5, it's 600%. Then he deals extra damage to servant enemies with earth or sky attributes, and that's 150% of charge level 1. And if you get him all the way to the final charge level, that's 200%. And that is Tesla. Tesla is an extremely good <laughs> AoE archer. Uh, probably in the contention of the, the three or four that exist that are specifically Buster AoEs. It is four. It is... It is Tesla, it is Napoleon, it is Gilgamesh, and then it is Ishtar. Um, four extremely good AoE buster units that exist currently on the NA side of the game. Each Arjuna. Arjuna is not good, boy. I, Arjuna is Arjuna has a monkey. I'm not gonna argue with this again. Arjuna is not a good AoE archer. <laughs> if he was, hmm. Exactly. Arguing with my brother aside. Uh, those are typically the four that you I, I always talk about in the sense of like, <laughs> well, first of all, they're usually the four you go to because as long as you have one of them, there's not really a need for the other one because all of them are extremely strong in various different ways. Uh, all of them, I think, except for Gilgamesh, have a 50% MP charge. They have an ability to increase themselves. They are, Their abilities to provide support to the team in multiple different ways. Like, this skill for itself is a way to make it so that his second skill's 80% chance is always 100%, but even in weird scenarios where you're in some kind of weird challenge quest, this could actually come in extremely handy, especially with the MP rate up, giving it to yourself, and then giving it to the party is 30%. That's not bad. Again, there are going to be some weird examples where you might use them. Um, and the fact that his Noble Phantasm deals extra damage to specifically servant enemies of Earth or Sky... That's pretty good. It means that you uh, you end up getting a very good Tesla. How good is Tesla? Uh, one time I had the... I said that I don't think Tesla is very good. And I was swarmed. And by swarmed, I mean like five people told me how wrong I was. And that I was over underestimating uh, Tesla. And I was stupid. And <laughs> they didn't tell me any of that. They just pointed me directly and said like, I think you're underestimating Tesla. And let me tell you why. And they explained it to me in some very nice ways that made me go, okay, my bad. I won't underestimate the man again but I always would have hold a grudge and I always tell that story just to let you know how good is Tesla good enough for people to jump you if you do not show him the proper respect now should you actually go summoning for him I think you have a need for an AoE buster type there's a there's a reason to go for him um, he is story luck so he's kind of a pain in the ass so if you actually like the character of Tesla um, which I've never heard anyone actually say they like the character of Tesla, but I think he's always funny in the story events that he's allowed to have, even though most of them are fighting with Edison. There's a reason to like him. Um, this would be your chance to get more copies of him and get more of him in general, uh, because again, it's a pain in the ass. Someone who has Qu uh, Quetzalcoatl is one of their favorite units. It's a pain in the ass to get more of these Storylock servants, let me tell you. They might show up again, but they always show up at the worst times, like here. So if you're in the need for a Buster, um, Archer, and all the upcoming big units like Morgan, Castoria, Oberon, uh, some of the dudes coming from Lost Belt 7 like Tez and Cuckoo, they don't really interest you, I could see going for Tesla and being like, well, what I need right now is a good AoE Buster, and I don't have Napoleon, I don't have Ishtar, I don't have Gilgamesh, you can go for him, for sure. So no, I don't see any issue with it. But again, if you're someone who's like, actually, I'm good with, I don't need to use an AoE archer at the moment. It's more, there's a difference between having a want and having a need. If you want him, it's probably good enough that you can keep waiting. But if you need him, then this is your best chance of kind of going for him. And that's Tesla. Best of luck to you who go for him. Same thing goes for Europe. I didn't actually say it. I'm now just calling her Europe after I saw that a AKA. <laughs> um, best of luck if you're going for him in any capacity. <laughs> Next unit, Romulus Quirinus, who after his buff actually functions as the way he's supposed to. Romulus Quirinus, he is a Lancer. Uh, they have one quick, two arts, two buster. Four hits on quick, three hits on arts, three hits on buster, five hits on extra. 
first skill is the Throne of Queerness EX, increases the party's attack for three turns, increases the party's critical damage for three turns, increases the critical damage of Roman allies for three turns, and then a 500% chance to inflict the Roman trait debuff for five turns to all enemies. 20% up to attack, crit damage is 20% and the Roman crit damage is 30% on a cooldown of five. Um, his second skill is Apothis, is, which is rank B, uh, grants self invincibility for two attacks, three turns, charges MP gauge and then gain, <coughs> excuse me, 10 crit stars on uh, the MP up is 30% on the cooldown of six. Third skill is the Nine Lives Roma slaying the Hundred Heads, the Roman style A. Increases his own buster performance for three turns, and incre uh, increases his own critical star absorption for one turn. Grants self a debuff on attack buff for three turns. Inflicts the Roman trait debuff for five turns to enemies when critical attacking. 30% the buster, 500% absorption, and the cooldown is five. Passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Independent Action B+, and Divinity of the Chief God, which is the increase of damage by 235 and an increased buster performance by 9%. His, uh, their third skill is an Anti-Ruler Attack Damage Aptitude, and the Noble Phantasm is Per Aspra Ad Astra, Our Arms Cut a Path Across the Universe, Rank EX, Anti-Star, Hits 5 times, Deals Damage to All Enemies, Deals 100 plus 20% and extra damage to Roman enemies uh, on enemies with the Roman trait uh, stack count max 10 stacks. Inflict the Roman trait debuff for five turns uh, for five turns of them, and then grants party the Roman trait buff for five turns. The damage is 300% at level one. If you get them all the way to five to level five, it's 500%. And then he also increases party's attack for three turns, which is 10% at charge level one. And if you get him all the way to the final charge level, it is 30%. And that is Rome. Rome is very good. He can be used as a, a looper of sorts for sure, but uh, because this 30%, as I explained beforehand, uh, am I stupid? Where is it? There it is. As I explained beforehand, this is perfectly good. Cooldown six. But the most important part here is that <laughs> the thing that he does is messing around with a lot of this like Roman crit stuff damage. And as long as you are playing around with it or in a challenge quest specifically where you're going to be able to apply this, I think you can have a lot of fun doing that specific gameplay. It lets you use a different kind of team. It lets you even use some units that you would never think of using beforehand just because it's like, when would I ever use them? Like Bodica. Bodica on her Noble Phantasm. Um, not on her Noble Phantasm. I think it's on her skill. Yeah. Queen of Victory A increases party's damage against Roman enemies for three turns and it increases their crit damage for three turns. That's 60% up to Romans and 50% crit damage. That will apply with this <laughs> because they will officially be Roman after you do it, which is really funny and sad in a lot of ways that the anti-Roman unit's best partner is the Rome, like the, the dude for Rome. It's literally him. It's the god of Rome, basically. Um... Some negatives about, even though I think it's a very fun way of playing, some negatives that do apply to him are the fact that this thing right here is is a debuff. And what that means is that occasionally, if the enemy has debuff immunity, there's a chance to not give him this, this stack at all, which is uh, very unfortunate. <laughs> very unfortunate indeed. Um... Uh, the other thing is obviously this doesn't activate on Noble uh, Phantasm because it has to be inflicted after doing a critical attack So that means he has a big focus on needing crit stars And if you're not on a specific build that can provide him with the crit stars provided You're gonna be not using them at top efficiency But if you are specifically playing in a team that set, set, set stuff up around him I think he can be extremely good and extremely powerful in a different kind of way. Like, yeah, you can use him kind of for the basic looper stuff, and I'm pretty sure he'd do perfectly fine. He wouldn't be better than Melusane, who is similar to him in that there's a Lancer AoE unit. Um, yeah, just to, just to show off um, Melusane real quick. Because um, this ends up being the, the case for a lot of dudes where it's very hard to compare them to. Uh, there it is. Because Melusane... Nope. On this one is an AoE art, is an AoE Lancer. And they're able to give themselves 100% NP and stuff. So it makes it so that if you have Melusane at even at MP level 1, but especially if you have them at any other capacity of NPs, like mine is MP level 2... 
it makes it very hard to justify a lot of other lancers because if you're looking up all you're looking for is pure damage there's no reason to go for queerness over Melusain. Um, the reason being is that Queerness, a lot of his damage is tied to doing this specific stuff. And yeah, if you can get that right correctly, you can do more damage, but you see that you have to put a lot more effort. So if you care about putting less effort into things, it ends up being the easier unit to use, and they both deal high damage. The difference is that one requires more thought to be put into the how much damage they do, and the other one does not. The other thing is Melisane can also be used with Black Rail to farm, um, which is something that makes her extremely powerful for, <laughs> because if you've ever used the Black Rail on Melusane, the damage you get from that is absolutely insane, and unfortunately not a lot of her units um, on Buster can do the same. Uh, some can, uh, but on NA, there's there's not really a whole bunch, but the ones that can, can do a buttload of damage. So that ends up being where Queerness is in a weird place, where if you are specifically looking for a fun unit that looks kind of like a Saint Seiya character, Queerness is right up your alley. He'll be able to do damage, he'll be able to do that, and in some cases, some very specific cases, able to do even more damage than Melusain. But if what you're looking for is the unit that can do it the easiest with the least amount of thought and the most easy to see, like, oh, that's easy. Melusane just does the stuff and not have to worry about any of the extra stuff. Like, for example, your buffs randomly not actually being able to deploy, deploy because they just had debuff immunity. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, fuck me, I guess. That's unfortunate. I wish I knew that. Um, then obviously the answer is go for Melusane, because yes, she is going to be the strongest of the unit, and she's also coming out this year. Um, so keep that in mind. If if what if what you're looking for, if what Romulus has seems like something you're looking for, and you don't necessarily care about Melusane in any kind of capacity, I think you can go for him. Um, that's the kind of caveat you have on him, because I think he's really good. He is 100% a good unit. He's just not Melusane, and unfortunately Melusane is coming back near the end of the year, so it's something to kind of keep in mind with a lot of stuff. Um, hopefully I'm not, it doesn't sound like I'm being too harsh on him, because I know I've had people in the past, I've seen people tell me specifically, it is possible to do more damage with Romulus Queerness with the right setup. I just feel like in general, for most people, the that's something you do when you really like the character and you're ready to set them up. But Melusane is just so easy to get off right off the bat. But if you disagree with that, feel free to tell me your specific reasons behind it so I can read it and kind of like see the other side of it. Because I'm not perfect. And I will gladly hear what other people have to say on it. I'd actually be very interested to hear what other people have to say on it. If I don't think it can, it, can, it shows very often, but um, I can sometimes be a little bit... What's the word? Dumb. There you go. Dice Curry, the last unit to talk about, Saber. Two quicks, two arts, one buster. Uh, first skill is Star of the Chief God. Uh, grant self a buff on attack. Uh, grant self a buff on attack buff for three turns. Surely that was a better way to say that, but I guess not. Charges on MP gauge when attacking with quick cards, uh, and then also gives another buff on attack buff for three turns, which gains crit stars when attacking with the arts cards. The MP up is 10%, the star up is 10, and the cooldown is 6. Their second skill is Guardians of the Navigation B, increases party's MP damage for a single turn, increases their attack, and gives them party debuff immunity for one time three turns. Uh, MP damage up is 15%, then the attack up is 15%, on the cooldown of 5. Third skill is Mana Burst Light Ancient A, increases own quick performance for three turns, increases own arts performance for three turns, and then grants self evasion for one turn, 20% to uh, quick and arts. Passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Writing B, Madness Enhancement B minus, Avenger B, because this dude here is actually an Avenger, a uh, caster, I believe. Um, actually, which one is the boy and which one is the girl? I think Caster is the dude, and Pollux is the is the girl. But I actually don't. Remember. Actually, if I look down here, they'll tell me. <laughs> uh, children of Zeus, brother. Discury as always is Gever. Pollux is the sun. There we go. Let's continue on. Um. Uh, Oblivion Correction C is the other passive skill. Self Replenishment Magic B D and then Twin God Essence B. Um. Okay. 
Third skill is an anti-ruler attack damage aptitude, uh, and their noble phantasm is the Dyscurtis Tyrandire. Him, the Divine Twins, I completely butchered that, I think. Hits eight times, it's Art's Noble Phantasm. It ignores invincibility for a single turn, deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to one enemy. The MP damage at level one is 900%, and if you get them all the way to the final uh, MP level, which is five, it's 1,500. And their overcharge effect is a reduction of Art's uh, resistance for three turns and quick resistance for three turns, which is 10% from both at charge level one, and if you get them to the final charge level, it's 500%. And that's Dice Curie. Um, I remember being a little bit harsher on them before. They were both boys. Which one did Fago make? My brother said both of them were <laughs> boys in original myth. But which one is the girl now? Okay. Castor is the one with the shield, and the sword is Pollux. Got you. Uh, and scene changed, because uh, it's now a completely new day as I put this down. I had to re-record what I had to say about Dioscuri, because when I originally talked about them, I was really negative on them. And I'm like, I don't know what the point of this unit is. And then I remembered before I was about to upload the video, I said this before, and people told me about it, so I have to look it up again. So, just to correct myself, so it's very hard when you don't actually own the unit and you can't use them yourself, and for this unit specifically, I don't know what it is about them, it breaks my brain. So here are the information I found from other people who use them, who say they are good. The thing that they are really good at is the ability to get a lot of NP gain from the combination of their skills, their noble phantasm, um... A, like a lot of the NP gain that they have just naturally built in if you get like three arts It's able you're able to get your NP back a whole bunch um, And obviously if you get your NP back a whole bunch then this reduction of arts and quick is going to be really stack up Because the next time you use it and then even if you think about arts in that kind of way You'd be able to maybe get a little bit more overcharge with this maybe in not the first hit But maybe the second hit just because obviously the first one you would want to go arts this one and then the two other abilities but then maybe for the second one maybe you have castoria maybe you have lady avalon and then okay so you could go a little bit further than that um so they are a very good unit the only thing i'll say is um i don't have a lot of experience with them and personally for me i feel like there's already a lot of really good single target sabers so it's a little bit of a if you're able to get them randomly i think you're going to be set and be happy that you now have a single target saber that you can go for especially if you are someone who is heavy in arts but if maybe if you're someone who has some other single target sabers built up i know last time i talked about a five star single target art saber someone said well, the problem is is that you also have, so maybe you have Hokusai, and Hokusai is a free-to-play single target saber who's very good, and for a lot of people, that's enough, and then for other people, it's like, well, if I have, uh, if I plan to pull, <laughs> one person said this, but it was like, I plan to pull for Summer Castoria in the future, and she's a single target berserker, and she's arts as well, so it's a little hard to justify going for a single target servant at all, and I would say that, well, I still would find the reason to get uh, something like a single target saber just in case you need a little bit more of that defense but maybe it's a little bit different in castoria's case but either way if you're able to randomly get them i think you'll be fine i'm not sure if they're a unit you want to specifically summon for unless you really like uh, caster and pollux in which case go for it because it's actually very hard to get multiple np copies from a free-to-play not free-to-play a non-limited five star just because they don't get featured a whole bunch like there it's not like <laughs> Daisuke is getting insane write-offs, and this is if you're a big fan of either, of both of them, this is your chance to get more copies. And obviously, more copies means more access to easy overcharge. Like obviously, an MP2, the idea of them being able to get MP back very easily means that they'd be able to charge up their stuff really easy. Um, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Summer Artoria. Who she's very good at being able to get that overcharge crazy filled up. So I can understand it in that case, but yeah. Uh, also, obviously, the ability to ignore defense can come in real clutch. Like that one challenge quest my brother and I went through where we fight against EO, where uh, we were able to ignore defense. If you just were able to, by default, ignore defensive buffs is really good. Um, 
So yeah, that's Dice Fury. Very a very rare example of me actually going back to hear it and talk about them. Um, just because I was like, I remember people being angry at me for underestimating them. And after the whole spiel I did with Tesla, I can't do that again, man. I can't go through it. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you the best of luck if you choose to summon for any of them. But I think for the most part, you're good to not really summon on any of them for Olympus. What you I need to focus on in Olympus, unless you are specifically someone who saves two years in advance saying, I need to get my copies of one of these units up. Obviously, then, yeah, go ahead, summon, because you're prepared for it. But if you're not someone who actually prepa is uh, prepared for any of these units, I think it's best to kind of wait and um, save your stuff for the upcoming really good units, like Morgan, like Castoria, like Koyanskaya. If you don't have them, or Oberon, or Melusane, if you don't have units like that, or you... Um, I think it's best to save for them, but if you don't care for them and you care more about these units, then, you know, I'm not here to stop you. I can only give you so much advice. I can only just say, if you choose to ignore it, go with God, and I support you, and go for it. So this starts on the 30th. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I have to go to work now. <laughs> and I'm tired. Till next time. Peace.